she scandalously stripped down to her underwear, where the yellow headlines in the press. It was a lie, but people willingly believed in the antics of Alice Roosevelt, daughter of the 26th President of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt. After all, this New York princess allowed herself and much more daring deeds in society. Alice was born in 1884 in Manhattan. Unfortunately, two days after her birth, Alice lost both her mother and paternal grandmother overnight. Her mother passed away from kidney failure and her grandmother from typhoid fever. What can you do? Money didn't save even the rich from illness. For Theodore Roosevelt, the death of his wife and mother was a great blow. To dull the pain of loss, he preferred to cross out his favorite wife from his memories. Even his daughter Alice he called Lee, as Alice was also the name of his wife. Theodore was unable to raise his daughter on his own. He sent her to the care of her older, unmarried sister Anna. And Theodore soon married his longtime high school sweetheart Edith. Alice did not like Edith. Stepmother and stepdaughter often feuded and competed for Theodore's attention. Edith was jealous of Theodore Roosevelt's first marriage. She took out her envy, insecurities, and frustrations on Alice. Edith once told the girl in anger that if her mother were alive, she would bore Theodore to death, even though she was beautiful. A friend of Edith's described Alice as a young wild animal dressed in good clothes. Edith was very unfair to Alice. In 1902, at the age of 17, Alice first went out into the world in a dress of delicate blue color. She made a sensation on the American high society. Alice was pretty, sophisticated, with great social manners. She was characterized by mischief and wit. Lack of maternal and paternal love affected Alice's character. Neither her aunt nor stepmother could not truly replace her mother. Alice behaved too frivolously in society. A year before Alice's debut, her father became president. Alice felt like the center of attention. She smoked on the roof of the White House, went to balls with a pet snake, pecked out the phrase, if you have nothing nice to say about someone, come and sit next to me on a pillow in her house, spent evenings in the company of millionaire Vanderbilts, bet on horse races, chewed gum, wore slacks, kept a dagger in her purse, played poker, raced on the tracks and put nails in the chairs of influential people. Alice became an unbridled and daring young woman. Even for a 19th century American woman, her behavior crossed the boundaries of what was acceptable. It is likely that Alice was secretly trying to attract the attention of her father, which she had been deprived of all these years. Alice was angry because her father refused to call her by her first name. It seemed to her that he favored the children of his second wife. One day, Edith suggested that Theodore send Alice to boarding school because of her unruly behavior. To which Alice said, in that case, I'll do something that will bring you great shame. Theodore relented. He didn't know how to tell his daughter no. Even when Alice interrupted her father with his co-worker, Theodore said he could only either run the country or Alice. Alice surprised the White House by roller skating in the East Room, jumping out from behind vases to scare dignitaries, walking on stilts through the hallways and rolling down banisters. Alice would go out on walks with the first man she met, but was against marriage and family life. Her scandalous lifestyle and reluctance to marry made Alice a major gossip for the press. Some called her the disgrace of the White House. Theodore was ashamed of his daughter's behavior but could do nothing about it. And it was his fault for not taking proper care of Alice after the death of his first wife. There was still that little girl in Alice who wanted a father's love. Her behavior literally screamed, look, notice me, I'm here. The New York Herald once printed an account of her social life. In 15 months, Alice had attended 407 dinners, 350 balls, 300 parties, 680 tea parties, and 1,706 social visits. Despite her scandalous lifestyle, Princess Alice was one of the most influential women of the 20th century, thanks to her father's presidency. In 1905, Alice went on a tour of Asia, where she met Congressman Nicholas Longworth. It was a rich hustler with an addiction to alcohol, in addition was older than Alice for 14 years and supported a completely different political party. Between Alice and Nicholas was not a strong love, rather an attraction or crush. But anyway, they decided to get married. At the 1906 marriage ceremony, Alice cut the cake with a sword rather than a knife. Alice was eventually banned from the White House twice. 
the first time she buried a voodoo doll of Secretary of War William Howard Taft's wife's voodoo doll in the yard, and the second time for constantly vilifying new President Thomas Woodrow Wilson. Despite this, many people took an interest in Alice. She was personally invited to attend the coronation of King Edward VII of Great Britain, but had to decline the invitation for political reasons at her father's request. In 1919, Theodore Roosevelt died. Alice was left alone. Even before her father's death, though, she felt like a loner. Family life didn't settle her down. Social evenings and a string of suitors continued. In the 1920s, she had a secret affair with Senator William Bora. It is likely that the only daughter Alice gave birth to was by William. Alice participated in USA political life, advocated for women's rights, and said, fill what is empty, empty what is full, and scratch where it itches. Alice's life is a series of scandals and the search for happiness. Despite her outward gloss, her rebellion, her cheerful smile and her barbed tongue, she was deeply unhappy. Her only daughter died after taking sleeping pills. Alice was on her own to raise her granddaughter, whom she loved dearly. Alice kept her salon, where politicians and creative personalities came. Even at the age of 80, Alice amazed the public when she took a swim in the pool in her clothes and invited guests to come with her. She died at the age of 96 in 1980, after undergoing a mastectomy twice. Her life's journey epitomized audacity, despair at the lack of paternal attention, and uncompromising opposition to outdated 19th-century norms.